At 5'11", 168 pounds, the best goalie in the world looks anything but dominating. In fact, the would-be history teacher from the Czech Republic looks, well, like a history teacher. But Dominic Hasek has the entire hockey world above. Five years, Hasek has been racking up the awards and accolades. He was voted the league's most valuable player in 1997 and 1998, the only goalie to ever win that honor more than once. He compiled the NHL's best save percentage for the fifth consecutive season, won the Vezina Trophy as the NHL's top goalie for the fourth time in five years, and uh, oh, there was that Olympic gold medal last year. But when Hasek first came into the NHL in 1990 with the Chicago Blackhawks, the league was less than impressed. I was playing at the time when Hasek first broke into the National Hockey League, and we all kind of laughed at him because he was so unorthodox. Brian Hayward was an NHL goalie for 11 years and is now a commentator for Fox, ESPN, and Hockey Night in Canada. I think that you see him do something every game that you don't expect, and certainly you don't expect to see it from a goaltender who, for the most part in the past, have been pretty conservative people, Hasek has broken all the rules there. By breaking the rules, Hasek has modernized the position of goaltender. And Hasek to save, and he says, I'll clear it out, fellas. Joining company with such hockey greats as Bobby Orr and Wayne Gretzky as players who have revolutionized their position and changed the game on ice. In the mid-80s, if you had seen a goaltender drop his stick and try and pick up the puck with his blocking glove, you know, the coach might have pulled him off the ice and put in the other guy. Now it's just kind of uh, expected almost. And if it's done during the play, people just say, well, he got that from Dominic Hasek. Hasek developed his unique style growing up in the 60s and 70s in then Czechoslovakia. The son of a uranium miner, he came from modest means. But all that has changed. Last year, he signed a four-year deal with the Buffalo Sabres worth $35 million. The Dominator is rich, widely considered the best in his profession, and is more recognizable than the president in the Czech Republic. Yet, there is still one thing missing for Dominic, a chance to drink from Lord Stanley's cup. And you know, there's a saying among goalies, if the other team can't score, they can't win. Well, if Hasha continues to keep his opponents from scoring, as he's shown he can do, the Sabres just might have a chance at their first ever Stanley Cup. While he was on a recent road trip, I got the chance to talk with the Dominator about his quest for the championship and what it's like being the most famous man in the Czech Republic. You've won all the individual awards and you have a gold medal, but, but no Stanley Cup title. How often do you think about that? Uh, I, I think about it. <laughs> I don't want to say every day, but... Uh... Of course, I think about it at least uh, every week, and, and uh, but like I say, I, I cannot think about it too much right now because uh, there is still about 50 or, I don't know, 45 games left, and I have to be more focused on these games, you know. Cut in front, the same. Are, you, are you competitive uh, with yourself at all? How do, what motivates you? You know, it's, it's a pressure, you know, a responsibility, you know. Uh, to the organization, to my teammates, and to the fans, you know. Everybody expects me to play well every day, and it's a big pressure and big responsibility, and, uh, and they believe me, and I like to prove every day that I can, be, I can, I can help them to win the game. Yeah, tell me about your uh, practice habits, because we've heard interesting stories that you al almost enjoy taking a puck to the head because it, it creates that, that toughness or it prepares you for what you have to do in a game. Is that true? It's true, but not every day I do it. Sometimes, you know, I tell my, my teammates, you know, shoot on my head and maybe I can make a save with my head. I mean, with my helmet or in my cage. And I'm not afraid to make the save like that. Oh, and Hasek throwing this blocker at him. And here we go. Look, Hasek's good. Look, Hasek's coming out here. Your level of intensity, uh, Dominic, has it, has it ever, have you ever become so intense that maybe you've gone too far across the line, overdid it? Yeah, maybe you're right, you know, sometimes I feel like I put even too much pressure you know, on myself and if I lose the game or, or I don't play well, or, you know, I'm, uh, 
you know, you can imagine how it bothers me, you know, I cannot sleep after the game, I think about it maybe too much, you know. But, but that is part of your personality, right? You've grown up, I mean, since age four, you actually were, were stopping pucks and, and, uh, and have, and have developed that. I, I stopping, but age of four, maybe in the kitchen, my grandpa or my dad, but uh, on the ice I was, the first time I was six years old. But since the first practice, I bend the goalie. I never asked my dad or my grandpa, you know, uh, to be in the net and I gonna shoot or shoot a puck on him or kick the ball. I always step into the doors in our kitchen or anywhere and I gave him the ball or the puck and they were shooting on me. Do you like all the attention in, in your native home in the Czech Republic? And the paparazzi people are on your lawn, they're following you and your, your family around. Uh, do you think you deserve all that attention? I don't know, you know, it's, uh, but I can tell you, you know, uh, I was popular even before in Czech Republic, but what was going on this, I mean, last summer, it was, it was pretty crazy, you know, <laughs> the people were coming to my house and I always said, you know, I'm sorry, I, in my house I don't give you any autographs, you know, not even to the kids, because, you know, there come one, he said to the other kids, all of a sudden you have uh, every hour ten people in your house, so I, I always said, no, I, I don't give you any autographs here, I'm sorry, guys. And one day came like 60 years old man to my house and I told him the same thing. And he started to cry and uh, I felt bad for him. And he told me, no, I don't cry because you didn't give me autograph. I just, I just still feel so, so grateful to you, you know, what you've done to, uh, in the Olympics. And he was crying and I felt like, uh, he, I felt great because I made him happy, you know, during the Olympics. What goalies do you admire the most? Uh, almost every goalie is, is, is a great goalie, and I think the goalies are much better than eight years ago or nine years ago when I came to North America. I think today the goalies are, uh, are much better. Why do you think that is? I don't know. Uh, bigger competition. Uh, maybe uh, I'm also that reason, you know, because I... <laughs> Uh, I, I brought something, you know, when I came to the States also. Maybe I'm also that reason, but I'm telling you, I'm positive that the goalies are better than eight years ago. Yeah, you've, you've, set, the, uh, you've set the standard. And uh, just to quickly hear a couple other thoughts at age 33. Do you have an idea of how much longer you want to play, how much longer you can play? I still feel good and I feel in a good shape. And, and I signed three years uh, deal and, you know, I, if I like this, uh, if I like my job, if I like to play, I, I will play all three years. I still like this game and, and I enjoy it. Hasek's talent in the net does have a negative side. In practice, he tries to stop every puck that comes his way and often succeeds. And that actually hurts the self-confidence of his teammates who just can't score against him. At the end of the last segment, when I was introducing this segment or teasing this segment, I said the intimidator. I meant to say the dominator. The difference is that Dominic Hasek speaks English better than Arnold Schwarzenegger does. So I don't know how I got it mixed up. Let's take a look at the intimidator on the ice for the Buffalo Sabres. I said the intimidator again. <laughs> You know, he wasn't always the dominator, unless you're talking about dominating the bench. The Blackhawks drafted him, barely, 199th overall in 1983. Dominic Hasek wouldn't play in the NHL until the 90-91 campaign, and then only in five games, only 20 more the next season. Apparently, Chicago had seen enough. They dealt him to Buffalo for Stefan Beauregard and future considerations. Think the Hawks would like to have that one to do over again. Now we got a break for Gagne, face to face with Hasek, who comes out. Marty McSorley coming, Mullen in the middle, Joey Mullen got it, Mullen the move, save made! Hasek with a tremendous leg save! Hasek took off in his second season with the Sabres, leading the NHL in goals against average while tying for the league lead in shutouts. The award started rolling in. What a move! Here's Quinn going in on goal! He took a shot! Keep it in. Tim Scrinny in front for a quick shot by Allen.
Nelson, and Hasek is there. Hasek became the first goaltender to win two MVP awards, let alone win them in consecutive seasons. And in the midst of all that, he earned the title as the world's best goaltender when he stood on his head to bring Olympic gold back to the Czech Republic. Be for Cruz, who drives to the net. Sundstrom working the bell, Holtra, he fakes, he waits, saved by Hacek, oh, he did it again. And then last season, he carried the Sabres to the Stanley Cup Finals. Buffalo was no longer a one-man team, but they were close, and Hacek was that one man. Lindros left it in the middle, Leclerc for his second. Richard, you've been covering the sports scene here in Buffalo for so many years. You said earlier in the program that you thought Bruce Smith was the greatest Buffalo athlete. Where does Dominic Hasek stand in, in that? Oh, he ranks among the best. He's the reason uh, that you, you go to a lot of Sabre uh, games to see him play. A dominant player at his position. Another nickname that he has is Gumby because of his ability to just do so many uh, uncanny things in front of the net. Uh, I would say a lower keyed kind of an athlete compared to some of these other guys. Jim Kelly, really the biggest personality probably in this town, but Dominic is right up there. Yeah, I probably would have gotten Gumby wrong too, the way I got Dominator <laughs> wrong. The, the, the history of hockey here, uh, two Stanley Cup almost, get, getting to the finals. How big is the sport right now? Is it, is it oh, it's huge. up there with yeah, the Bills? It, it, well, again, the Bills are, are, are religion uh, by themselves. I mean, there's a special thing with the Bills. you got to remember, when you fill that stadium, you're almost talking about 75,000. Uh, uh, but HSBC Arena uh, plays before a lot of packed houses. And again, this hockey team uh, in a modern era, uh, certainly the, for, for a long time, it was a lot of uh, memories of their first Stanley Cup uh, season back in the 70s. But uh, the 99, 98, 99 season, I think, brought it back. And, and there's definitely a rabid feeling. A lot of kids around this area play hockey, maybe more than football. That's because the Russians so many fields uh, <laughs> on every street. We're going to pause once again. When we come back, we will continue our conversation about the Buffalo Sabres. The reigning king of goaltenders in the NHL is Dominic Hasek. The Dominator has won the Vesna Trophy, symbolic of the league's best goaltender, three times in the last four years. He also won the 1997 Hart Trophy as the league's most valuable player. But his road to NHL stardom has not been an easy one. I was drafted, I think, in 1983. And somebody, some of my teammates told me about it like two or three months later. You were drafted. Uh, I said, what does it mean? And he explained to me what does it mean to be drafted. And I said, that's nice. But not nice enough to lure Hasek out of Czechoslovakia where he became the number one goalie in Europe. Seven years later, Dominic came to Chicago, accepting the challenge to play in the world's best league for the Blackhawks and their fiery coach, Mike Keenan. Yeah, at that time I was starting goalie in the national team and all of a sudden I came to Chicago and I was one of maybe four or five goalies. It was pretty strange for me, you know. I, I was thinking if I won't be starting, I'll be at least a backup goalie, but they sent me during the training camp, they sent me down to Indianapolis. It was a really tough, for, um, tough time for me. Dom paid his dues in Indianapolis, becoming the IHL's top goalie. But Hasek's NHL dream was in jeopardy when Keenan cut him in year two. That time I thought the NHL for me is over. I, I, I pick up the phone after a couple of weeks, you know, and I, I call him, I told him, Mike, I don't think I can play in the NHL. I'm too old and uh, there are better goalies here. and and. I think I'm not good enough, but Mike Keenan, he told me, uh, I'll call you back, I'll see. The call eventually came, and by January of 92, Dominic was in the NHL. But backing up Eddie Belfort dulled his skills, and his rare starts were unimpressive. SCA centers on goal, it goes in, he scores! Hasek was a spectator for the Blackhawks during their improbable run to the 92 Stanley Cup Finals. 
trailing in the final game of a four-game sweep by Pittsburgh, it was Keenan who gave Hasek a chance to shine on the NHL's biggest stage. And this saw Mike Keenan's lips. Dominic. Here comes Dominic Hasek, the Czechoslovakian goaltender. Dominic Hasek paints his first action here in this series. It was the debut of a goaltending phenomenon known as the Dominator. Smith comes down, back door pass to Stevens. Oh, what a save by Hasek on Kevin Stevens. That might be the save of the night. Here's one of you. In a goal back hitter, stop by Hasek. Great save again. He got around Chile, he'll snuck down though. Peter Davis, Stevens in a great play. Can Hasek challenge me to come out and knock it away? Now Mike Hasek, another big goaltending effort. Will you win on goal against Hasek? He shoots it, Hasek robs him again. Dominic wasn't able to help the Hawks overcome Pittsburgh in 92, but he did give the Sabres a boost when he came to Buffalo in the offseason. Playing every day allowed the hockey world to realize that despite his unorthodox style and strange mannerisms, Dominic was a very special goalie. Dominic Hasek um, stops pucks, and, uh, and that's his job. You can do it stand up, butterfly, flopping, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, you stop the puck. He understands that probably better than, than any goalie. And it's taken a long time for coaches and managers uh, to understand him. To understand Dominic, you must accept that he is a unique physical specimen. You can't explain it. Look at the guy. He's got four limbs going. I mean, he told me, uh, Hasek did, that when he was younger, he was taken to the doctor because they thought his knee joints were something wrong. I mean, you don't have these rubber knee joints like this. So they recommended for me some special exercise, like every day. I exercise like, I don't know, four or five times a week for 20 minutes. But these exercises, when I was six, seven, eight, nine years old, I think it, it really helped me to be, maybe today, a better goal. The NHL's best goalie over the past five seasons. In 1996-97, Hasek enjoyed the most celebrated season a goalie has ever had. Winning his third Vesna Trophy, collecting the Pearson Trophy as the player's choice for MVP, and becoming only the fifth goalie in NHL history to win the Hart Trophy as league MVP. This is something I, I cannot describe in words. I, I want to thank for sure Buffalo Sabres organization for giving me a chance to prove I could play in the NHL. I, never, I will never forget it. Hasek's place in history was further cemented by his astounding finish to 1997. And Dominic Hasek has established a new modern National Hockey League record. His sixth shutout in one month. Is Dominic Hasek the greatest goalie of all time? I am very proud of all these trophies, of course, you know. But <laughs> there are so many, so many great goalies in the past, so I don't feel I'm the greatest at all. And maybe if I win, a couple of Stanley Cups, I would feel, but not, not, not today. I don't feel like the greatest goalie at all. I was looking at Dominic before. He kind of looks like olive oil from Popeye. <laughs> ah. Ah. Buffalo wings. Pads for legs, $1,500. Glove for hand, $400. Mask for face, $150. Having a slinky for a spine, priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Official card of the NHL and fan of those who dominate the game. 
major miracle for the Russians to win the faceoff, gain control, go to the other end, and beat Hashik, who's been almost unbeatable throughout the tournament. Sean, way over here on the right is Bore. See, he's sliding down below. He's going to try to sneak up ice. It doesn't work. The Czech Republic is on its way to its first Olympic men's ice hockey gold medal. Dominic Hasek, his second shutout of the tournament, one nothing the final. Team Czech Republic wins its first gold medal in men's ice hockey. Never did it. Had many close calls as Czechoslovakia. In fact, three times lost to the Soviets with the gold medal at stake in the Olympics. But finally, they get it done, led by Hasek, who gave up six goals total in six games. One goal per game. He stopped 149 of 155 shots for an unbelievable <laughs> save percentage of 96.1. And they celebrate that. underneath the flag oh, of the boy. new Czech Republic. You know, their, their national anthem in English means, where is my home for the Czechs? And they've been in the Olympics since 1920. For the Czechs, home is where the gold medal is. That's right. First Olympic gold. They were underdogs all the way through this thing. What a remarkable performance. And their number one guy, both goaltenders, Stelenkov and Hasek, played a great game. But this is amazing what Dominic Hasek has done here in this Olympic tournament. He, he has proven to be all world, spectacular, a wonderful job. An interesting, J.D., all the controversy in the NHL playoffs about Hasek. Some said he didn't want to play in the playoffs, that he was sort of uh, not faking his injury, but exaggerating it because he didn't want the burden of having to carry his Buffalo Sabre team to the playoffs. Well, in this stage, nothing could be more distant from the truth. Sean, the two teams that got here into the finals deserved to get here. They were the best two teams in playing this Olympic tournament. And congratulations to the Czech Republic for a wonderfully played tournament. They found a way through good coaching and a strong system, great goaltending. Uh, Peter Svoboda goal to win it. And to the Russian team, they showed a lot to me the way they're able to come together. And the other big the thing that I noticed is the stars who played well on the big ice here in the Olympics and the stars that also can play well at home on the NHL ice surface, Timo Solani, Pavel Bore, uh, Dominic Hasek, Yarmir Yager, they proved to me that they are a world-class star athlete, and this was a wonderful tournament to be a part of. Well, there's an old adage in hockey that a hot goaltender can dominate in a short tournament, and that's what happened here at the Olympics. The dominator dominated and led the Czech Republic to its first gold medal in ice hockey. With a lot of help from his teammates. They played great team defense throughout the tournament, but the spotlight throughout was on Hasha. Peter Svoboda, the gold medal winning goal for the Czechs. No one picked this team in the Dream Tournament, but then the Dominator came up big. Goalie Dominic Hasek allowed just six goals in 155 shots. A remarkable individual performance. And the victory over Russia lends an added poignancy because, of course, in 1968, the Soviet Empire snuffed a democratic uprising in Czechoslovakia. And in memory of those days, forward Yarmir Yager wears the number 68. And back in Prague, a man who was part of that resistance, now the country's leader, Václav Havel, was watching Hasek and his teammates play giant killer once again. And he wasn't the only one. This was the scene early this morning in Prague. A sea of red, white, and blue. The game started at 5.45 a.m. 70,000 fans gathered in Old Town Square in Prague to watch the game on three huge screens. Then after the victory, there was hugging, people singing, we are the champions, champagne flowed, young and old reportedly kissing and hugging in the streets, singing the Czech national anthem. Shanahan has scored three goals in the last two games. Eisenman got a bloody nose for celebrating. Yeah. But ultimately, it was the line of Shanahan, Fedorov, and Eisenman that Carolina had to contain. Had to contain. 
Herbe is back in net. And the Detroit Red Wings, the countdown is now at 31 seconds. The goal scored on the empty net. Shanahan from Eiserman in 1915. Herbe goes back to the bench. Empty net again. Carolina getting onside. Countdown at 16 seconds. The Detroit Red Wings, their third cup in six years. The tenth that they have won in their history. Scotty Bowman will get his ninth as a coach. Dominic Kaisik, Robitaille will win their first. The Detroit Red Wings have won the 2002 Stanley Cup. that the Dallas Stars did not want. They did not renew Brett Holm. Has his second Stanley Cup. And this man, Dominic Hoshik, has his resume finally completed with a Stanley Cup. Will Dominic Hoshik come back and play again? Dominic Hoshik first time. <laughs> He's trying to out bench press any goalie that's ever held it. Will he return? I don't think he will. I don't either. Unless the players talk him into it. Luke Robitaille, first time. Now he can say he has touched the Stanley Cup because this is the first time in his life. He's had opportunities to walk up to him many times. The first time he has ever touched it. It's been some time. Four years ago, you were going to retire. You get injured, and here you are winning the Stanley Cup. Your thoughts? No better feeling, you know, than to win the cup. You know, it, it took a long time, and I'm so happy. You know, I I came to this city, you know, and have a chance, you know, to play for this team. And now the dream came true. A gold medal in a Stanley Cup. Is there a difference here? I'm sure you're going to come back. <laughs> Give me a couple of days. Give me three, four days, you know, and I, I'll let you know. Uh, I have to sit down with my wife and make Thank you. <laughs> Brian? Whatever their field, the genius or revolutionary never plays by the book. Instead, they throw out the book. They rewrite it their own unique way. For our next inductee, his rewrite of the book of goaltending took place over three decades of professional hockey and was punctuated night after night by acrobatics and reflexes unseen, flips and pad stacks and desperate lunges approaching acts of contortion, all just another day in the crease for this innovator. Game after game, he got into the heads of his opponents, and as the four by six space got smaller and smaller for them, the legacy and respect for the dominator got bigger and bigger. We miss the show he wrote, or improvised, every night his own way, which is why Dominic Hasek enters the Hockey Hall of Fame. When I think of Dominic Hasek, I think of a very unique and special goaltender. one of a kind. I've never seen a goalie do this and do it to this date where uh, he'll stack his pads, he'll be out of position, he'll twist like a pretzel, drop the stick and throw either his, his blocker or his glove backwards almost uh, and make this amazing save. But Dominic made saves uh, I've never seen to date and I don't know if I'll ever see again. The Dominator was a, is a great nickname for him because he could dominate a game. An MVP trophy, a heart trophy, is really about a, a, a player who can inspire his team, make all his teammates and players around him better. Uh, and Dominic uh, definitely did that. Everyone played two inches taller and, and that much more confidence.
Well, he, he's an icon in Buffalo. The things that he was able to do captivated that city, and it's an amazing sports town, and the sports figures are, are loved, and uh, Dominic was one of those icon sports figures and, and always will be in Buffalo, and he captured the, the hearts, and he lifted a team and lifted a city, and uh, he'll always have that. There's not a guy that uh, I probably know is, is that practiced harder than he did. He played like he practiced. He practiced. He wanted guys to line shots up that were, you know, right at the top of the circle or sometimes at the hash marks. And he would tell the guys, shoot them as hard as you can. And uh, those stories are legendary because uh, most goaltenders would uh, would chase you out of the net. The only time Dominic would chase somebody out of the net is if it was Robbie Ray scoring on him and Robbie telling him that, uh, hey, Dominic, you better be ready for tomorrow night's game if you're letting me score on you. If I could score on you, anybody's going to score on you. Robbie came down, scored two or three goals, and told all the other guys that's how you do it and told Dominic to be ready to play. And Dominic, he didn't take a, a, a liking to that. He chased him down the other end of the ice. And, of course, I don't think he dropped his gloves because Razor is pretty good at that. A gold medal coming up for the Czech Republic. It is now done. We won Olympics, you know, we compete today for the gold medal, so it was just something like my dream. He was starting to get the recognition that he deserved, and then obviously he went over the Olympics and put his team and the country on his back and, and won a, a gold medal. So uh, from that moment on, I think the world, uh, we all knew how great he was, and then he just took it to another level. He's just a special, unique, one-of-a-kind goalie I don't think we'll ever see again. Dominic Cassett deserves to be in the Hockey Hall of Fame because his uniqueness as a goaltender, his unbelievable accomplishments as a goaltender, how he's almost revolutionized the style and the uniqueness of his goaltending. He carried teams, he made players around him better, he gave his team confidence. Those attributes and the kind of person he is, he's so well deserving to become and be a Hall of Famer. Here to present his 2014 induction plaque is 2013 inductee Chris Chelios. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dominic Hasek. easier to play hockey. I want to thank the Hall of Fame committee for my induction into the Hall. Being selected with Mike, Peter and Rob is a great honor. I've played against them all and I know each of them deserve the recognition they are receiving tonight. Bill McCurry was on the ice for two most important games I ever played for my country. The final two games at the Olympics when we won the gold medal. It's a special experience for me to be inducted with him. Bill, you are a great referee. For Pat Burns, I sincerely hope he is enjoying the very deserving recognition his family is here to celebrate tonight as he observes all of this from where he rests. For me, the path here has been paved with kindness and support. Kindness and support that I receive from a very large number of people. Unfortunately, I will not be able to mention them all, but I think of them often. My parents and my grandparents deserve a special mention. My father and my grandfather were the first to shoot things at me. Tennis balls as I tried to cover the space between the open kitchen door, soccer balls in a meadow near our home and pucks on the lake in our town. My grandfather was a very good soccer player. When he scored on me, he jokingly called me a slow Mr. Zavora. 
as a what is the arm that prevents the cars from crossing the railway tracks. <laughs> the time my grandfather spent with me and the encouragement he gave me made me feel I could be a goalie. He saw the goal in me before I did. When I was six years old, my dad got me a goalie equipment. There were a few pieces he bought and some he made. It wasn't pretty, but it got me on the ice. And from the day on, I never wanted to do anything else. When I was young, I would walk to the arena through the dark of the city with my mother or grandmother pushing a baby carriage loaded up with my goalie equipment for the early morning practices. One of them would drag themselves out of bed just so that I could play goal. I cannot thank them enough for the sacrifices they made for me. As I, I began developing as a goaltender, I was lucky to have a number of the outstanding coaches and a number of the great role models in the Czech Republic. They influenced me greatly. I cannot mention them all, but I will never forget all the hours I spent in front of a television or at a stadium watching great Czech goalies like Jiří Holeček, Vlado Zurila and Jiří Crha. I learned a lot from them. At age 25, I decided to try my luck in the NHL. Soon after, Berlin Wall fell. A decision I questioned at first when they sent me to the minors and they left me unprotected and in expansion draft. None of them wanted me. I began question if I could play here. It was very frustrating, but when I reflect back, I realize the experiences I had playing for the Indianapolis Ice in the old IHL were a very important part of my future success. I learned how to adjust my game to the smaller ice surface. Ice surface. The staff in the office and my teammates really helped me with a new language and new culture. I will never forget them trying to communicate with me when none of, one of us had any idea what the other was saying. <laughs> Soon enough, the Blackhawks called me up and my NHL career began. There I met Shelley and Iron Mike. They both played a big role in my development into an NHL player. For those who don't know them, they are much different people than you see from the stands. They are not quite as tough as they look and have much bigger hearts. They talk to me and they encourage me. Most importantly, they believe in me and befriended me. I don't think I would have stayed in the NHL without the encouragement they gave me. Unfortunately, Eddie Belfort played so well in front of me that it was impossible for me to play much in Chicago. Then I got lucky. I was shuffled off to Buffalo. In Buffalo, I, ex I experienced many of the best years in my career, thanks in large part to the support that was extended to me by John Mackler, the fans, my teammates, and the Sabres organization. From our owners, Seymour and Nor Nordinax, to President Larry Quinn, to my longtime coach Lindy Ruff, and teammates like Dale Haverchuk, Paddy Lafontaine, Richard Schmehlik, Michael Pekka, and Alexei Shitnik. My goalie coaches in Buffalo, Mitch Korn and Jim Corsi, invested a lot of time with me and helped me to take my game to another level. They were smart. They didn't try to change my unique style. Instead, they helped me build on and improve it. Every day I went to work in Buffalo. There were people behind the scenes who made it possible for us to be successful. They did little things that allowed us to focus on the big things. People like Mike Gilbert, Jim Pizzatelli, Rip Simonik, George Babcock and Frank Harry. They were the glue that kept our team together. The fans and the people in Buffalo supported me through every success I had. The welcome Richard Schmelik and I received after we returned from Nagano with an Olympic gold medal made me feel like we were bringing the gold back home, not into foreign country. Although I had wonderful years in Buffalo, the opportunity Michael, Il Mr. Illich and Ken Holland gave me in Detroit was wonderful in a very different way. They gave me the opportunity to play with more great players on one team than most players ever play with. It was something special to play with Steve Eiserman, one of the greatest captains to have ever played hockey. 
And how many goaltenders get support of players who have won 10 Norris trophies like Chelly and Nick did? I have not mentioned them all, but the players I play with in Detroit taught me a lot. Not only were there great leaders to play with, they were all great people to be with. The support I have had extends to many people here, but also to many people back home in the Czech Republic. Lenka and Roman, the current owners of AC Pardubice, the professional team in my hometown, made it possible for me to win one last cup after I retired from the NHL. After we won the cup in Detroit, I took a year off. I could never have made it back to the NHL at my age without the support of my personal trainer, Joseph Pepa Brook. If not for Pepa, I would only have retired once. He helped me extend my career at least by five years. My agents, Rich Winter and Steve Katlovitz, here in North America and Miro Hanis back home, God rest his soul, helped me a lot throughout my career. They helped me find the right place to place. They supported me when things did not go well at first when they did go well and when I retired every once in a while despite their frustration. Our work together for so many years had led to friendship, which I will cherish for years to come. My children, Dominika and Michael, they always kept their fingers crossed for me. They were there at home to greet me after good and bad games with hugs and the kind of love and support only children can offer. Those experiences brought me more joy than anything that ever happened on the ice. I am immensely proud of them. Michael is home in the Czech Republic studying and Dominika is studying in England tonight. I want them to know I love them very, very much. My partner Liba joins me tonight. She's my very best friend. Liba, I want to thank you for support and your friendship. You have made my final exit from hockey easier and my life now richer and more enjoyable. I will always consider myself lucky to have had supportive parents who helped me get on track that led me to the NHL. This league is home to the greatest players in the world and to some of the most wonderful people I have ever met. The experience has changed my life in ways I never imagined were possible when I followed my mom and my, my grandmother and a baby courage to practice in the dark. I want to take this opportunity to publicly express my sincere thanks and gratitude for everyone who helped me, who played with me, who cheered for me, and who befriended me throughout my entire career. All You all helped turn my dream into a reality. There is no way I could be more grateful. Thank you very much.